previously on Community Crime Solvers Live. Who stole the coins? What clue points to the thief? Gotta show your answers in three, two, one. Whoops. Welcome back. So, the answer to foul ball burglary. Excuse me, a high pitched voice drawled. I can tell I can tell you who stole the coins if you're interested. The startled officers turned to see a dapper little man step from behind the leafy palm fronds. Who are you? the tall one demanded. Sherman Holmes at your service. The thief was Jake. Jake the tall officer had to think for a second. You mean the kid who discovered the robbery? How could he be the robber? Sherman knew he had their attention. He took his time, reaching into his coat pocket and pulling out a briar pipe. What young Jake discovered, Sherman said as he sucked on the unlit pipe, was a broken window, a screeching burglar alarm, and a coin collection lying temptingly on the table. All he had to do was yell back that there had been a robbery. Then while the rest of us went around the front of the house, Jake slipped inside, turned over the table, and took the coins. They may be in his pockets, or he may have hidden them somewhere else. But Jake's your thief. The tall officer still looked interested. Can you prove what you just said? Of course, old bean, Sherman said, insulted by the notion he could form a theory without proof. Go back to the crime scene and check the broken window glass. It's underneath the tablecloth. That means the table was overturned after the baseball broke the window, not before. (laughs) (laughs) It couldn't have been anyone but Jake. So, hooray! Yay! Desi ran to the work. Ain't no way. (laughs) <laughs> I read Encyclopedia Brown as a kid. The unsafe safe house. For all the help Sherman Holmes provided the police, he received little, if any, recognition. In fact, the officers he helped the most were often first to make fun of his quirky personality. Mm-hmm. They don't want people thinking some amateur is solving their cases, Sherman mm-hmm. would say with a generous shrug. I just wish I didn't have to sneak around eavesdropping all the time. One of Sherman's most extreme eavesdropping cases involved hiding behind a coat rack for over an hour. On that day, his instincts for a crime led him beyond a yellow tape barricade and into the front hall of a police safe house. A normal looking home with a modest, pleasant looking row house in which a mob witness had just been murdered. From behind the safety of the coats, Sherman watched as a nervous rookie stood over the body of the strangled man. A minute later, Captain Loeb strode in, his baggy suit flapping in the breeze. I was here protecting the witness, stammered the rookie. Then I got a call from your office ordering me back to the station. I left him alone. By the time I figured out the call was fake and rushed back here, Frankie was dead. (gasps) <gasps> oh no <laughs> Frankie no <laughs> Spoiler alert Frankie died <laughs> oh. So we'll need a replacement next week <laughs> <laughs> The captain remained calm Who all has the keys To the front door Just me answered the rookie The door locks automatically behind me I told Frankie not to open it for anyone Mm 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 Captain Loeb examined the body. Strangled from behind, meaning he probably trusted his assailant. Who would Frankie open the door for? Let's get them in here. The first suspect to be brought in was Lou, the victim's brother-in-law. Frankie sneaked a telephone call to me last night at work, Lou said, staring down at the corpse. I'm a phone company operator. Frankie didn't tell me where he was. My wife is going my wife is going to go nuts when she hears. The second suspect was Barry. With a last name I cannot pronounce, so we're just gonna call him Barry. Can you spell it please? Can you use it? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, his last name is spelled A I E L L O. I A L O. There you go. <clears throat> the secret mob informant who had talked Frankie into testifying. I feel like I'm responsible, he sighed. The mob was using all their contacts to find him. Barry bent down and examined the welts around the victim's neck. Looks like a belt was used. Poor Frankie shouldn't have turned his back. Captain Loeb had then taken them into questioning and then crossed to the rack and grabbed his trench coat. The commissioner's gonna have my head, but I suppose I gotta call him. Loeb had just pulled a notepad from his coat pocket when he saw a face staring out from behind Frankie's leather jacket. Who in blazes are you? Hi. Sherman was so nervous he momentarily forgot his English accent. I'm so sorry. I know I'm trespassing, but... He could think of only one way to redeem himself, and that was to hand them Frankie's killer. Who killed Frankie? What tipped Sherman off? Say where the body was found. Look, the body. This ain't. <laughs> what is this this is twenty this is. CBS, this is CSI questions. New York. <laughs> you guys can win this time. Just give you guys a do. Do. All right. Is everyone written down? Do they think it is? Uh-huh. Alright, we're gonna show. Hold up. In... Okay, we're not. <laughs> oh, man, he's drawing a picture of him. <laughs> Diagram? <laughs> it's like. <laughs> Pictionary! Distance Ritter from style. the dead body. Circumference of the belt. Ready? Alright. Alright, show in three, two, one. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with. I don't know what we're gonna start with. Frankie! We're gonna start with. Next week! Find it! <laughs> Your mic's low. Your mic's low. Oh, yeah. You picked it with? She's dead, remember? She can't, she can't talk very loud anymore. She's speaking from beyond the grave! <laughs> there we go. Can you hear me? Okay, Can perfect. you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Alright. So, I picked Lou because that's someone Frankie would know. And also, he is a phone operator, so I figured like, he could mess with the phone and call some fake person. Or be some fake person. Okay. Okay. Follow. Follow. Uh, I said the rookie cop because if he got strangled from behind and the door locked behind him and he got strangled in the house, I feel like the only other person that would have been in the house is the rookie cop. And I think that's all I really have. And he's a new cop, a rookie cop. He's working for the mob. He's crooked. He's crooked. <laughs> Fred. Okay, I said Lou because yeah, if he's the phone, the phone operator guy, he could probably find out where his location is because he, you know, he made a call, so he could probably he probably has a way to find out where he's at based on that. Um, and it was his brother-in-law, so he would trust him. He would turn his back to him. I don't know if he would turn his back to like the the mom or whatever. Cause didn't they say something about he like have to? be someone he had to be trusted to turn his back to or something like that. He turns turn his back to him. In a heartbeat, Lou is the guilty one. He is the father. <laughs> I'm not the father. Do the happy dance. Vince, <laughs> why did you pick Ricky Cop? Or your How did he know it was a fake call? Okay. I can, 
that's legit. That is legit. <laughs> so I, was like, <laughs> no, I realized it was a fake call. He didn't really, he was like, oh, it's a fake call. Let me turn around. I didn't know that. It's because they, instead of using the code for like, there's a robbery, they're like, blue 42 said hi. <laughs> Shit, that's a football call. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He, he should have known better than that. But yeah, that's that's pretty much why I said they're lucky. That and, um, you know, people generally trust police officers. <clears throat> but especially if they have a key to your house. What? Yeah, I mean, there's also gonna be... a theme here. The last person that you have to figure out who is the, who's the third suspect is usually the killer. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure. So, I picked Barry. The reason why I picked Barry is because Barry said he should have never turned his back. But the thing is, no one ever told Barry that the guy turned his back on whoever killed him. So that's why I think Barry did it. Oh, I thought he was just mean in general. Like, to, you know, like... So that's why I picked Barry. Oh. They teach us that. You make me sense. sick. You make <laughs> You smart people right, watching. Can we edit that out and redo the answers? Yeah. <laughs> so, these are our thoughts. Tell us your thoughts in the comments, and you will get the answer to this case next week. Going three for three. Three for three. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh.